Hello everyone, it is I, Captain Oblivious Mist, and today we're going to be taking a look at the complete history of the SS Europa, the ship of Nazi Germany. And, well, she isn't spoken about that much compared to her sister ship, the Bremen. So, without any further ado, we're going to get into her history and her career, as she has had a relatively amazing history, while overshadowed. World War I had destroyed German shipping, and to make matters worse, the German economy was obliterated by the Treaty of Versailles, and what little remained of the shipping was then seized by the British and French governments as war reparations. And things were no different for the North German Lloyd Line, as during the war the Kaiser Wilhelm the Grosser was sunk, and the rest of their beloved Kaiser class were taken as a war reprimand, which left them in a difficult spot requiring a brand new class of ships to not only replenish their fleet, but also to bring back German morale. She began construction shortly after her sister, the Bremen, in 1927. She was going to be the second North German Lloyd liner to be over 50,000 tonnes. She was going to also be powered by advanced high-speed turbine engines. She also had a beautiful bulbous bow with a streamlined profile which made her look slim and beautiful. Now, as for the construction itself, it went semi-smoothly and she was launched on the 15th of August 1928. Or at least it went smoothly until 26th of March 1929 when she caught fire, the cause of which is still unknown today. The fire raged all day and gutted the ship, which almost put an end to her career before it even begun as her turbines had been severely damaged, but thankfully for the Europa, the North German Lloyd Line decided to repair her and continue construction. And just 11 months later, in February of 1930, the Europa was completed. But don't worry, if you like fires, that would not be the last time she'd catch fire in her career. Europa surprisingly had a very successful early career in the 1930s as on her maiden voyage she took the Blue Raban from her sister, the Brahman, with a crossing time of 4 days and 17 hours. Though one downside to this record speed and her amazing looks was a design flaw to do with her beautiful exterior. The issue I hear you ask, well, that's simple. You see her funnels? Well, you see they're low to the decks. Uh, many passengers reported issues with them being covered in soot. So, after the voyage, they sent her for a refit that extended the length of her funnels but sacrificed her short superstructure. But at least it worked. Now, an interesting thing to note is similar to the Bremen, she was given an interesting invention called a seaplane, which was positioned between her funnels. But though this is interesting, it was also temporary, as it was removed just after a few years of service but soon she would have much bigger things to worry about. In September of 1939, Hitler invaded Poland, which started another world war. But surprisingly, to say that they were in a massive war, the Nazi government didn't know what to do with the Europa. Ideas were thrown around to use the Europa in Operation Sea Lion, aka the invasion of Great Britain. But the invasion never happened, and so the Europa was inactive for a majority of the war, until she was captured by the Allies in 1945, and was then converted into a troop ship. After this, she was claimed by the USA as a war prize, and she would then serve three voyages under the US Navy. She was then moored in, I believe it's pronounced Brummerhaven, where something that was pretty lit would soon happen. Right, to start off with, the only reason why this section is its own part of the video and not part of another section is because it didn't fit in with any of the other sections. But hey ho, now it's a section, so let's get into it, as during the removal of her superior interiors, she caught fire. Not interesting, I know, but as they were replacing her destroyed interiors, someone decided to replace all of her interiors with inferior new ones to make up for the material shortages caused by the Second World War. Not to mention that many major cracks in the hull was discovered, and would you like to know what the US then did? Why, they then handed her over to the French line, in this state, need I add, to make up for the lost Normandy. 
which brings me to the next and final section of this video. So as I just said, not too long after the war, the United States handed over the Europa to the French line to replace the SS Normandy, which caught fire during the Second World War. But that wasn't ultimately what destroyed it, as the stupidity of the firefighters on the scene would do that, but that is a tale for a different video, as we are currently talking about the Europa, which was renamed the Liberty. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've heard people pronounce it Liberty, but I'm, I'm pronouncing it the Liberty and sent for a refit, and while she was on her way there, she collided with another burnt out French line ship called the SS Paris, causing even more damage to the Liberty's hull, and sinking her. Thankfully though, she was raised in 1947, then caught fire again in 1949, but finally in 1950 the Liberty left on her first voyage for the French line, where she would become the pride of the French line, but this wouldn't last forever as in 1961, the SS France arrived. So now, the French line had no need for the Liberty. So they sold her for scrap in 1962, and the process was completed by 1963, ending the career of a ship that was truly the pride of two nations. Hello everybody, it is I, Captain Oblivious Mist, and uh, I'm just here for the epilogue where I'd just like to voice some of my own opinions on the Europa um, as I've got my own and well I like her she is one of my favorite ships like she's one of my new favorite ships I absolutely adore her um, I didn't know much about her before research and I've done loads of research on her during this video and quite frankly I absolutely adore this ship now she's gotta be in my top 10 favorite ships um, like she, she is just amazing Everything about her career, her designs, I love her. Well, there is one thing I didn't like, and that is the fact and how they extend, extended her funnels. But apart from that, it's, just, it's not too bad, it's just a small nitpick. Apart from that, I absolutely adore her. <clears throat> On another note, uh, as I'm recording this final section of the video, it is 10pm. I think I might just be able to get this video out for the week it was intended to. Um... So, you know, there's that, by the bell. Um, but yeah, that's really all I've got to say on this matter. Um, apart from, I hope you guys have all enjoyed this video, just as I've enjoyed making this video. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, and enjoy the bloopers. Let's try that again. And now, I will see you in the next one. <clears throat> Goodbye! The Europa surprisingly had a very successful career in her 1930s. Yep, because the Europa uh, was in her 1930s. She is the oldest ship still in service. Uh, I'm tired. I'm recording this at stupid o'clock. I should have just gone to bed. September of 1939, Hitler invaded Poland, which started another world war. But surprisingly, to say that they were in a massive war, the Nazi government didn't know what to do with the uh, Empress of Europa. What? The hell is the Empress of Europa? I'm just making my own ship name here. First we had the Empress of Baltic, and now we've got the Empress of Europa. Jesus Christ, Dylan. <laughs>